What's good, YouTube? So I haven't posted a video in a minute, but today I'm going to dive into closing B2B clients. I have about 10 in the pipeline since I've made the pivot. Close two, we have four invoices sent out and everything is way bigger in terms of price, the size of the project. But the big thing is what, a, and I've discussed this in past videos, a creator will pay X, a business will pay X, a creator spending from their bank account, a business is spending from their budget. And an example is like one business will pay 15K for one video, which we closed, and a creator will pay, want to pay 15K for 10 videos. So can do 10 times the less amount of work, still a lot of work on the business side because it's different, but the same amount of money is inflowing. And this is going after once you have a good track record, higher budgets, less work. Why would you want to focus on making 50 things when you can get paid for one thing the same as the 50. And this is the, I would say the best angle and way to go if you're building an agency is delivering one thing that is the highest quality possible versus having to deliver 10 things at high quality for the same price. Which it seems so simple, but you really have to shoot more shots. And by doing this, it's like I've been doing cold outreach, through mostly just LinkedIn and crafting every single outreach message directed based on analyzing the company and who I'm reaching out to. I've connected with the venture capital world and top-down approach, go to venture, see what companies they have in their portfolio, cater pitches directly towards their portfolio companies and connect with someone in the venture fund that would be a good key decision maker or hand you a referral into one of their portfolio companies. Then word of mouth, asking people, hey, do you know someone here that I could connect with? Getting connected. And I mean, most of the game is just the network, who you know, who you talk to, and how many people you talk to. And the more people that you're willing to present valuable insights and ideas to that are actually solution-oriented with the outcome of driving more revenue or driving more customers to a website or driving more demos booked. And before going into everything, you need to know what the whole point of the offer is. Why do they need you? And you need to figure out how to lay that out in the clearest way possible for someone who doesn't necessarily understand why video is important or why your offer is important. Because a lot of these companies are operating very efficient. Right now, we could argue that we're in a pullback, minor recession, whatever. Companies aren't spending as much. Companies will spend money if they can make money off of how they spend it. The whole point of bringing something to someone is to make them more money than they pay you. It's, and directly from Alex Ramosi's book. I wrote it on my wall. Price is what you pay. Value is what you get. And the price should be below the value they are going to get. So if they spend 15K, this company could make 50K to 1.5 million on their contracts. So the, the difference between B2B the market and, and creator is creators aren't selling a software solution that has a $300,000 customer value or LTV. So you have to think about when you're going after certain angles, what does it, what value does a video convert and drive? What is the customer value that one video, one conversion is? So like, for example, one of my clients, the LTV is 15,000 per signed up member and they have a low customer acquisition rate. So the average customer spends $15,000 a year once they sign up for the software. They can afford to spend a lot more money on content and videos than someone who has an LTV of $200. So it's complete, it's completely different way of thinking, completely different positioning. And you have to shoot so many more shots because they, the business world moves way slower than the creator world. These guys aren't, they don't care about the same things that creators care about. They don't care about virality. No one cares about virality in the business world. For the most part, they care about product market fit and attacking the audience that really it's on LinkedIn. How do we get a hold of the, the key decision maker in a company that would buy our product and implement it into their company? It's a lot tougher. It's a lot slower. And the other thing too is when you do close, Often they're not paying you up front, 50% maybe, or you got net 30 terms, so you're not gonna get money right away. 
And the other thing that I've been doing, and this is, in, it's funny to go backwards, but I've created a few free specs in the past couple months. But these specs, when you make something for free, now, now when I make something for free, the expectation, if this closes on an account that a spec is made for, it could be a twenty to $50,000 value. So the point of doing spec work is to prove a concept that you can sell for a ton more or you can have that in your portfolio now to show to other people, hey, we made this example for X, Y, and Z. We could do it for you, but a lot better. So the spec model, I wouldn't even, at a certain point, once you have cash flow with your agency or any type of business and you can do free work to present, I mean, a lot of people are like, don't do free work, don't do free work. The people I'm doing free work for, they have billion dollar, value, billion dollar market caps, multi-billion. So like, if I can get in that room and deliver something for free and someone likes it, that could turn into a one-year retainer or contract on such a higher value that for me, everything has to be, everything has to be calculated because it takes up time. You're delivering a service. So if it's free, it needs to make sense. And the only, like making stuff for creators, it's like, okay, Chris Williamson's team, they hit me up. They saw a tweet of mine and they've sent over some audio, some audio clips. And I truly believe I can pioneer a new creative look for him. So I'll probably do that for free with a clause that if he wants to post it, then he needs to pay for the video or sign, um, sign on a contract to work with me. And that's something I do with all my clients is when I deliver something for free, if they like it and they want to use it, test it, post it anywhere, they have to pay for it. You deliver it watermarked and they will pay for it if they want it because now they're like, wow, this is great. We want to test it. We like what you did. We'll buy it from you. So you do it free. You get your foot in the door. If they like it, they buy it. You put them on a contract. If they don't, whatever you add to the portfolio. Um, what else? Well, you can charge so much money. You, everyone's thinking too small. I was thinking too small for a long time. Can literally charge so much money. Everything's relative, um, especially once I hear like what these agencies charge. And I've I've learned some things from uh, from talking to people in New York and in the industry. There there's agencies out there where their minimum contract is a million dollars, five million dollars, three million dollars, whatever. Like they don't they have wait lists and they don't take on a single person to work with them under a certain threshold. So when you're afraid of asking 5,000 or 10,000 for something, that's the, if the person says no, there's someone that will say yes. Uh, this went out of focus. But going off that, if you send, if you quote 20, if your price, if you don't want to go below $15,000 and you can provide the value at $15,000 with a high ROI, then when someone says no to you, there's someone out there that will say yes. So it's 100% a game of shooting shots and getting, getting your offer in front of the right people. And even now, like the the minimum that I will take on anyone minimum engagement is 5,000 and I'm probably going to change it to 10,000 soon because I, you, there's a different level of person and mentality and operation style. The more, the higher the, the budget goes. And what I've realized is every time I raise my minimum, the quality of clients gets better and the connections with the clients get better. And for me, like I don't even post like a lot of the work we do under NDA or I don't share it anymore. The stuff I post on my Instagram is for fun, just to bl blow up the Instagram. And I, I don't know, I could probably grow it to a million. I have no, no problem just having to do it for fun. The stuff I do for companies is all internal. I'm not going to share with anyone. Unless you have the budget to work with me on that type of ask, I'll share with you examples of work we've done. But the gatekeeping of your best work from the public eye, if it's for a business, is 100% better than giving it up because then people can't copy you. Go copy the Instagram. But the stuff I do for companies, I don't want anyone to copy because they won't even know I'm making it or what my offer is or what I'm doing. So that's, uh, that's all I got, but just gonna maybe post more of these as I have ideas. Peace.